Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode one of Two Cents, a show in which I, your amazing host, Alex Owis, put in my two cents on automotive-based subjects. Today, we'll be talking about the 2019 North American International Auto Show, also known as NAIAS or the Detroit Auto Show. The North American International Auto Show is an annual event held in Detroit, Michigan, AKA Motor City, and is arguably the most important car show of the year. During this two week event, manufacturers from around the world showcase their current, upcoming, and concept vehicles. Although I was unable to attend the show myself, I was able to reach out to fellow automotive enthusiast, Greg Debkowski, who is a local in the Detroit area, to get his opinion on the show. He had this to say about the following cars. In regards to the Mustang GT500, this car looks far better in person than the images released in the media, especially in the red and blue versions shown at this show. It will be interesting to read the future reviews comparing the Challenger, Hellcat Red Eye, the Camaro ZL1 1LE, oh my god those are long titles, <laughs> Um, he says, I'm going to bet that the Challenger will be the best quarter miler, but the GT500 will be the better overall track slash strip application. I absolutely agree with you, Greg. The modern era of the big three muscle car wars has been exciting to say the least. Ford, Chevy, and Dodge are constantly one-upping each other to seemingly no end. Personally, I felt that the 2013 GT500 uh, was going to be the ceiling as far as horsepower is concerned with their whopping 662 horsepower. But Dodge proved me wrong with their uh, Challenger and Charger Hellcat, the Hellcat Red Eyes, and even the Challenger Demon, which now has over 800 horsepower. Wow. But now Ford is claiming over 700 horsepower in its new GT500 as well. Its predecessor, the GT350, was underpowered compared to its crosstown rivals by more than 100 horsepower with just 526. That feels weird to say, just 526 horsepower. Wouldn't have said that about 10 years ago. And yet that car still managed to hold its weight against those competitors, especially on the track. With the new GT500, we can expect to see the same track ready build that the GT350 offered, if not better with an additional 174 horsepower or more. I have no doubt, doubt that this car will be the superior track car amongst the domestic competition. I would also agree with Greg that the, uh, the Dodges will likely hold their place on top due to their raw power, especially the Red Eye and uh, the Demon. I would also be interested to see how the new GT500 would stack up against the Corvette ZR1. Uh, these two vehicles are not normally considered to be in the same segment, but uh, the reason it'd be interesting to see them paired together is because they now share the same supercharger. So it would be interesting to see them go head to head. Uh, on a side note, it appears that the new GT500 will come with a standard automatic transmission. Hmm. This is perhaps considered blasphemy by most fans. But Ford's new automatic transmissions have proven to provide remarkable performance. So, I don't blame them. However, I do believe that a manual transmission should at least be offered for those who provide the hobbyist and classic style of driving that a manual transmission has to offer. In regards to the Lincoln Aviator, coupled with the new Lincoln Navigator, Lincoln now has two outstanding entries in the mid to large SUV segments. The blue-gray exterior color of the Aviator at NAIAS will be very popular. Stunning color. I'm glad that Lincoln went away from the alphanumeric naming configurations. Agreed. I am so incredibly happy to see that Lincoln is finally producing vehicles that people are excited about and want to buy. Lincoln struggled for decades and appeared to many as being nothing more than a glorified Ford or Mercury, and that was a fair assessment. I thought for sure Lincoln was going to die out by 2011, no thanks to the 2008 economic recession here in America. But it didn't. Mercury did. It then began to rebrand, which was a step in the right direction. But it still fell short of what consumers wanted. 
Their angel wing grills were an attempt to pay homage to vehicles such as the 39 Lincoln Zephyr, but were not very well received. Their alphanumeric naming system was clearly an effort to compete with the trend within their respective segments, but simply wasn't working for Lincoln. But now, things are looking good for Lincoln for the first time in a long time. Personally, I felt that this change of face uh, began with the 27 Lincoln Continental, which then inspired the 2018 Lincoln Navigator. And now, Lincoln's revived the Aviator nameplate, one that we haven't seen since 2005. All these vehicles are true American luxury vehicles deserving of their segment in the industry. They are fresh in design, inside and out, and loaded with technology and luxury. I am especially excited to see that the Aviator is rear-wheel drive and has an optional hybrid motor producing 450 horsepower and 600 foot-pounds of torque versus the standard 400 of each out of the 3.0 liter V6. Go Lincoln! In regards to the Cadillac XT6, Conversely to the Aviator, the Cadillac XT6 looks like a Cadillac product that should have been released two to three years ago. It will be interesting to see how these two SUVs will compete in the market. Yup, you are absolutely right. Is this new Caddy a good looking SUV? Yes. Is it a refreshing game changer? Not likely. To be perfectly honest, although I consider myself to be a true and blue Ford Lincoln Mercury guy, I felt that over the past 15 years or so, Cadillac actually makes the most appealing vehicles, all things considered. They offer sleek and razor sharp designs, offer rear wheel drive platforms, and have performance based trims. The same thing could not be said about Lincoln. And let's face it, this new XT6 will be paired up in direct competition with the all new Lincoln Aviator. I don't feel like the XT6 stands out from the rest of the Cadillac lineup enough to truly feel like a standout competitor in the same way that the Lincoln Aviator stands out amongst the other Lincolns, if you understand what I mean. I don't think this is a smart move by Cadillac adding another SUV crossover in addition to the XT4 and XT5 and the Cadillac Escalade. I feel like consumers would rather one up and get the Escalade or you know maybe just get the fully loaded XT5 or even consider settling for the XT4. It's my opinion that they're really just competing with themselves on this one and will likely lose sales in some of their other SUVs. Good luck Cadillac, please prove me wrong. In regards to the Chevy Blazer, not sure why GM named this SUV the Blazer. This is not your father's Chevy Blazer, and that is not a good thing. Oof. Yeah, um, not really loving this one, not one bit. Chevy Blazer was a brilliant success for Chevrolet until its demise in 1995 when it was then renamed the Chevy Tahoe. My uncle Matt owns a Blazer. Couldn't tell you the year, it's uh, probably like a 1986 or something like that. Gorgeous vehicle, I love the gray and red. Uh, paint on it. it looks gorgeous but now in 2019 the new blazer looks nothing like it has in its history sometimes it can be a good thing uh, but in this case I agree with you Greg this is not your father's Chevy blazer and it's not a good thing I'm not sure how the GM guys feel about this SUV but I look at it and say this doesn't look like a Chevy and it doesn't really feel like a Chevy either I like the idea of bringing back the nameplate, but I believe in this case, uh, a new nameplate would have been more appropriate for the vehicle that Chevy presented at the show. In regards to the Chevrolet 1500, the Chevy 1500 has gone away from the rectangular wheel openings that have been a styling cue since 1973. The wheel openings are now oval like Ford and Ram. Not sure of GM's logic to use the faux tailpipes on their 1500 High Country model. That design cue is somewhat acceptable for cars and SUVs. Not sure I like that on trucks. I hope Ram and Ford don't try to mimic that design. Like I said before, I'm a Ford Lincoln Mercury guy, but I'll have to admit I've always been a fan of the rectangular wheel wells on Chevy trucks. They provide a more aggressive, and muscular look when compared to their Ford and Dodge equivalents. 
It is definitely sad to see Chevy changing that styling cue. It was absolutely signature to their trucks. To me, it looks as if the new 1500 is trying to blend both rounded and rectangular wheel well designs into one, as if it can't make up its mind about which it wants. Perhaps this is a test by GM to see how a more rounded design will be received by its consumers and fan base. As far as the faux tailpipes are concerned, yeah, I'm uh, definitely in the same boat as you, Greg. Not feeling it. I love them on cars, you know, coupes, sedans. I even like them on SUVs on occasion. But yeah, I'm not buying it on trucks, at least not this one. Swing and a miss, in my opinion. In regards to Ram trucks, the Ram trucks lineup is very formidable. They are giving the Chevrolet trucks a run for their money in second place for overall truck sales. This would have been unheard of five to ten years ago. Ford will really need to keep their game at a high level. Ram trucks have no doubt been catching my eyes more and more over the past few years. I'm growing to like and appreciate them more and more year after year. Just recently, I attended a snowcross event here in Shakopee, Minnesota, where one of the primary sponsors was, in fact, Ram Trucks. And, of course, they had two vehicles on display. I believe they were uh, both big horns. Very nice-looking vehicles, not gonna lie. I was very impressed and would not mind taking one out for a spin sometime. But, anyways, for the longest time, Ford has been the number one seller of trucks in the United States. And honestly, I don't see that changing anytime soon. But I would have to agree that Ram trucks are certainly picking up in popularity and that Chevrolet will really need to work hard to stay in second place for truck sales. Now, remember, last year in 2018, Dodge surprised us by selling more of their Challenger muscle cars than Chevrolet sold of their Camaros. Perhaps we'll see something similar happen in terms of trucks in the years to follow. We'll have to wait and see. And that is all we have for today's episode of Two Cents. I'd like to thank Greg Dabkowski for providing both your pictures and your thoughts on the 2019 North American International Auto Show. And I would like to thank you, the audience, for watching my pilot episode. You listen to my two cents, now it's time for me to listen to yours. Please take two seconds to share two cents on the 2019 North American International Auto Show. Feel free to share your pictures, your videos, and your thoughts. Follow along on Facebook and take part in the poll to vote for your favorite vehicle at the 2019 North American International Auto Show. You can follow the Left Lane TV Facebook page by clicking the link in the comments or by typing in the address here. Thanks for watching and don't forget to live life in the left lane. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to live life in the left lane. We'll see you next time. Oh no! Why are you over there? No! You're supposed to be right here! Why did I move you? Poor kid! Oh. oh man. Friggin' biscuits. Whatever. Nobody'll notice, right?